Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating seamless repeating patterns in Adobe Illustrator. This is sort of a basics 101 video. We're also going to look at how you can save those patterns so you can get access to them again in the future and how you could potentially share them with other people. Now a word of warning before we start, if you haven't recently updated your version of Adobe Illustrator, you should do so. At the time of recording, I'm using Adobe Illustrator 25.4.1. Now there was an issue with an earlier version which is 25.3.1 which related to patterns in Illustrator and so I don't want you to be using that version because one thing that we're going to do later on is probably going to fail. So if you haven't upgraded, if you're still using 25.3.1 then upgrade to 25.4.1 before we start. Now you can get to that dialog by choosing help and then about Illustrator and you can read here which version of Illustrator you're using. But assuming you're using the right version, let's get started. We're going to create a new document. It doesn't matter how big this is, but I'm using one that's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. We're going to create a simple pattern. I've got heaps and heaps of videos on creating more complex patterns, but we're just going to create something really, really simple today. I'm going to the ellipse tool. So I'm just going to select that. I'm holding shift as I drag out a small circle. I'm going to apply a heavier stroke to it. So I'm just increasing this to about nine points. Now my stroke I think is on the outside. Let's click the strokes panel here and we're going to click here and align the stroke to the center. It just looks a little bit better. I'm going to choose my colors. So I'm going to double click here on the fill color and I'm going for a sort of pale turquoise blue. And I'm going to make the outside, the stroke, a darker turquoise blue. So let's go and get that blue here. So this is going to be the shape that I'm going to use for my pattern. And we're going to create a pattern of dots. I'm going to select over the shape. And now I'll go to object and then pattern make. Now this pattern make tool was first introduced in Illustrator CS6 and so you want to be using CS6 or later. If you see this dialog, just click OK. Now this is the default pattern. I'm just going to close this dialog up for now. Let's have a look at this patterns dialog, this pattern options dialog. These options down here will have no effect on the final pattern. It just has to do with what you see on the screen here. So for example, we could choose to see more dots, but again, that's having no effect on the pattern itself. We can choose to dim copy. So this shows us what our pattern piece is like, and these are all the repeats. And you can also choose to show the tile edge. That's the pattern tile. Now, all of my dots are way too close for me. So what I'm going to do is spread them apart, but I'm also going to offset them. I'm going to arrange my pattern so that these are offset. So this dot here would actually be over here. We do that by selecting a tile type and we'll choose brick by row. This is the sort of pattern that you see in brick walls. So that's why it's called brick by row. Now I also want to increase the space because these dots are really close together. So I'm going to make sure that this says maintain width and height proportions, which it does. I'm going to click here and I'm going to shift up arrow just to increase the spacing here. I'm not worried that things are going off the edge. Doesn't matter. Nothing to do with what our pattern's going to look like. But what I am looking at is the spatial arrangements between these dots because that's what my pattern's going to look like in future. And if I'm happy with that, then we're good to go. And I am happy with this, so I'm going to click up here on Done. And we're left with our original dot, which I can now select and delete. And inside the Swatches panel, here is our pattern. Now to use a pattern, you need something to put it in. You can't just use a pattern without filling something with it. So I'm going here to the rectangle tool. My initial document was 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. So I'm going to make a square that's 1000 by 1000 and I'm going to fill it with my pattern. First of all, I'm going to align it to the artboard. So I'm just clicking these options, horizontal align center and vertical align center. And I'm going to turn off my stroke because I don't want that. I'm going to target my fill I'll go up here to the swatches panel and click on my pattern. And so now I have a rectangle that is filled with my pattern. 
it's possible if you wanted to do something with this particular document to change the size of the pattern. To do that, you would choose Object and then Transform and Scale. You'll note that we've got the rectangle here selected, so that's what we're going to transform and scale. And then we'll make sure that we're not going to transform the object. So we're not going to change the size of this rectangle or this square, but we are going to change the pattern itself. And I'm going to do this in a uniform way, and I'm just going to bring it down to 50% of its original size. So if I wanted a 1000 by 1000 pixel document for some use, then I could determine at this stage how much of that was filled with the pattern. Happy with that? I'll just click OK. So that's how you create a pattern in Illustrator. The problem is, while this pattern is here in the Swatches panel for this particular document, let's go and create a brand new document. I'm going to do the exact same size. But have a look in the Swatches panel here. That pattern of dots is not in the Swatches panel for this document. It is for this document. In this way, if you're used to using Photoshop, you'll notice that Illustrator is very, very different. The Swatches panel is not consistent between documents. Each document has its own Swatches panel. And so we have a problem here that this pattern is only accessible to this document. It's not accessible to any other documents that we create. Well, that's not very useful. So let's go and solve the problem. I'm just going to click away from this rectangle. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of everything from this swatches panel that I don't need. Now, you can rail against me and say that this is stupid and that I shouldn't be doing this. And I totally agree with you. But you know what? This is how Illustrator works. So as much as you don't like doing this, what I suggest is that you click the first of the swatches, shift click on anything else that you don't want and delete it. Because if you don't delete these, they're going to be saved along with this pattern of dots and you're just going to have messy files. I know it doesn't make sense. I know it's clumsy. I know, I know, I know, but that's how Illustrator works. You won't be able to get rid of this one, which is none, and you won't be able to get rid of this one, which is registration. So I just leave them there because it's not worth trying to delete them because they won't go anyway. This is your pattern swatch, so this is the one we want to keep. But you know what? While we're here, let's go and make another pattern of dots with a different set of colors. So I want the exact same pattern. I just want different colors. Let's do it the simple way. I'm going to select over this shape here, and I'm going to this icon here. It says Recolor Artwork. I'll click on it. This is the new dialog that's in Illustrator CC21. It's not really very nice, but we live with it. I'm going to click here on Advanced Options. So this is the old dialog that you would have seen in earlier versions of Illustrator. Let's go to Edit. These are our colored stops for the two colors that we have in use here. So what I can do is drag them into a different position and change the pattern. If I like that, I can just click OK. And look what's happened in the Swatches panel. We have the original pattern, and we also have a duplicate, one with different colors. So anytime we go to the Recolor Artwork dialog and recolor our pattern, if we do it this way, we're going to get a different pattern. And so it's very easy to create colorways, different versions of your pattern with different colors. Now I'm going to unlock my colors here now so I can choose different colors. So I can do a blue inside, for example, and a pink outside. Let's just brighten this up and let's increase the saturation of the outside. So let's go and find a slightly better pink to use. And if I'm happy, I'll click OK. And again, here as promised is yet another pattern in the swatches panel. We've got this one, we've got the original one, and we've got our new sort of pink and blue one. So we've got in the Swatches panel only the patterns that we want to save, plus the things that we can't delete from it anyway. So we'll go to this flyout menu, and we're going to choose Save Swatch Library as AI. Now, there are two options in this dialog, and those people who are curious are going to say, well, why can't I save it as an ASE file? Well, you can't because patterns can't be saved in ASE files. Colors can, but not patterns. So you need to save them as AI. And really, a really good rule of thumb is to just save all your swatches every time as an AI file, then you don't have to think about it. So I'm just going to click there. Now, Illustrator is going to take you immediately, whether you're on a Mac or on a PC, to the location it expects 
to save your swatches into. And it's going to go here later on when it's looking to append a swatch to a file. So just leave it be, just put it wherever Illustrator tells you it's going to put it. And I'm going to call this three dots because there are three dot patterns in here. I also have an old pattern called dots. So I just want to make sure that we're doing a different file. I'll click save. Now, that is going to help you in future documents that you create on this computer using Illustrator, the version that you're currently using. However, if you want to share this with somebody else, burying it inside the file system is not going to do you any favors at all. So if you want to save this file in another way so that you could share it with friends or give it away on your blog or sell it somewhere, this is what you're going to do. Exactly the same thing, fly out menu, save swatch library as AI, only this time put it somewhere where you can find it. So I'm going straight to my desktop and I'm going to put three dots on my desktop. It's an AI file. I can now share that. I can sell it. I can give it away. It's in a location that's easy to find. It's not buried inside the file system. But you do need two copies of it. You need one for your own purposes, put where Illustrator expects to find it. And then you need one for sharing, put where it's just going to be easy for you to find. So let's go to this document, which as we've proven previously, does not have in the swatches panel those dot patterns. They're not there. So to add them, what we're going to do is go to the swatch libraries menu here, user defined, and here is our three dots pattern. I'm going to open that. And what we get is a small dialogue with the patterns in it. Let's just make this a larger thumbnail view. So here are our three patterns. I'm going to click on one which automatically adds it to the dialogue here. Now I could click on each in turn, but if you've got a lot of patterns, that's very time consuming. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the last one. So I've got all three selected here. I'll go to the fly out menu and I'll click add to swatches. And that adds all three of these to the swatches panel. And this is the process that is not working in that earlier version of Illustrator. In 25.3.1, this was broken. So we now have accessible to this document those swatches. And for any document in future, when you want to use your dots, you just go to this swatch libraries menu, go to user defined and open up three dots. And then your pattern is available to you. I hope this video has been of help to you. If you want to learn to make more complex patterns, then have a look on my channel. I've got heaps and heaps of patterns that you can make, but these are the basics that will get you going with working with patterns in Illustrator. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.